Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Live Let Thrive. How you doing, Micah? I'm doing good. And who are you? I'm Steve, and this is a show about Airbnb, Airbnb life, uh, short-term rentals, share economy, all that good stuff, everything that entails. Yeah, today we have another special guest coming back at you. Oh, episode Uh, 14, by the way. Oh, yeah, episode 14. uh, We have Mr. James Carlson from Denver, who's the Airbnb guy in Denver. So uh, The Airbnb guy in Denver. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Small bow. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. So um, say something funny, James. (laughs) No. No, no, I got nothing. I, I, I uh, ruined all my good lines before yeah. we started taking. So. It's going to be a long interview. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's jump into it. Jump then. into it, man. So first question, which is Steve's question, by the way. Uh, when I told him about you, his first question was, uh, was who are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah. Probably better answered by my wife. Um, <laughs> I'm, in, I, I'm a... I'm a real estate agent here in Denver, Colorado. I mean, I work with all kinds of buyers, sellers, and investors, but I kind of got my start in real estate doing Airbnb. And so whenever I got my license, I just decided to kind of make a niche out of this. And I mean, no one was talking about it. And it was just crazy to me because there's so much revenue potential uh, with short-term rentals. And so I just started uh, teaching classes and, you know, uh, holding little workshops about it. And I've just kind of made a name for myself here in Denver as, as the Airbnb guy, as you guys said, so. That's who I am, at least in the capacity that you're talking about right now. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, man. That's it. You've explained yourself well. Yeah, man. So, oh, the one thing, yeah, so pretty much how I kind of came across James was I kind of have these Airbnb uh, keyword alerts on bigger pockets, And uh, every time I see something about Airbnb, James would comment on it, so I knew probably most likely he knew his stuff. And like I'd see other people say, "Hey, if you want to learn about Airbnb in Denver, talk to James Carlson. He's the guy." <laughs> so definitely knew we had to have him on the show. So, so you're huge on Bigger Pockets? Yeah, no, I mean I love Bigger Pockets. That's actually kind of where I got started in real estate too, even before I was a real estate agent. Um, I just like them because they are. Uh, you know, there's no BS on there. They're not trying to sell you anything, and everyone's pretty pretty non-possessive of their information you know it's not like everyone's trying to get one up on each other everyone's sharing everything i really kind of try to operate that way in uh and how i do business now you know i share information and if it comes back then then good if not that's fine i believe in karma a little bit so uh right yeah anyway yeah i love big pockets for sure i love the forums i mean they sometimes they get a little hairy a little vicious (laughs) really have you been attacked do what? Have you been attacked on there uh, verbally? I, not me, but I've I've I've, I've had some popcorn <laughs> and enjoyed reading some of the <laughs> <laughs> the verbal sparring or the written sparring. Yeah, I, people uh, people really believe that they're right. There's a, there's a right way and a wrong way, especially about Airbnb. There's like one guy on there who's like so anti Airbnb. He's all VRBO, VRBO. <laughs> I know exactly uh, who you're talking about. <laughs> Every time you know that there's like a VRBO Airbnb question, he's going to pop up and he's going to say, there's no question in my mind. You know, it's VRBO. So. Funny thing about that, I want to have that guy on the show because I know who you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His name is John, I'm pretty sure. Um, so Underwood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no, that's it. I wasn't going to name names, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every interview we've done, it has the have the guys have uh, their name started with a J? Is that or is that right? Not Al. Jasper. Oh, okay. Al. Al. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Al ruined it. Sorry. Yeah, we had two straight James though. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, can you tell us like a little bit about the uh, Airbnb in Denver, the Denver market? Because I know you said it was kind of a little bit kind of tougher. And uh, yeah, can you kind of go into that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, Denver, Denver. Before January of this year, actually had a law that just didn't allow any sort of rentals um, for less than 30 days. Uh, but everyone looked the other way. 
And, uh, and, you know, eventually neighborhood associations got pretty pissed about it. You know, they start talking about transients coming and going, you know, all, the, all these code words for, for bad strangers. And uh, anyway, the city council eventually passed something. And right now what the law of the land is, is that you can do Airbnb, but it has to be in your primary residence. So, I mean, if you're an investor, you know, it's pretty tight. Uh, there are some ways around it. Um, which, you know, we can get into if you're interested, but, uh, pretty much, you know, it's, it's one Airbnb per person, uh, and it's gotta be your primary residence. So it, it, you know, it really restricts what you can do as an investor, which, which sucks. Uh, cause I mean, I, I, I saw just like a lot of people, just like you, Mike, I believe, I mean, it sounds like you've got a lot of properties and you're doing this. And I mean, that's my wife and I were just, you know, loading up. We were ready to go as soon as they passed this law because they thought thought they were going to uh, to maybe open it up a little bit more. Uh, and instead, they really restricted it. So that's the lay of the land here. Some different cities around here are different. Like Colorado Springs is totally wide open, just a little bit south of Denver. Um, but right here, it's 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 restrictive. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how are people kind of bending the rules a little bit now? Are they just kind of like not telling or what are they doing? Because I personally did that before and it didn't work in my favor. Yeah, no, I mean, we can talk about my my history in Airbnb at some point. I mean, it was totally bending the rules. Um, But I uh, right now, yeah, people are either just flying under the radar, waiting until they get caught. Um, uh, you know, what the rule is, is that it, it has to, what the, the language of the law is, is that you, um, your primary residence is your primary place of return as proven by like a bunch of different documents, like your driver's license and your vehicle registration. So people are buying a place and they're putting all those documents in, in the address of that place and then Airbnb it. But yeah, I think the city is getting pretty, pretty good about that right now. So they're, they're actually about to have some test cases here coming up in the fall uh, for people who are doing exactly that. Um, so that's one way around it. Uh, the other way is that they actually, the law does allow tenants to Airbnb. You know, so if you're a renter and you get your, get permission from your landlord, you can, you can rent out um, on Airbnb. So I know of some people who are looking to buy like a property with a basement apartment and then they install a, a long-term renter down there and then they make that tenant get a license for Airbnb and then they can rent the top part full time on, you know, as a short-term rental, if that makes sense. So, yeah. So they're kind of house hacking. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're house hacking, but they're not even there. You know, it's, it's oh. um, like you could buy up, uh, you know, under the rule right now, it, you can only have your primary residence, but if you buy a place, put a tenant in there, tell that tenant that they can rent out their place because for that tenant, it's their primary residence. And now you can buy up a bunch of properties, put a tenant in there, and then have that tenant rent uh, the the top part as an oh, Airbnb. So you kind of you kind of have a – use your tenant as a property manager, kind of. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that, that's, pretty, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Now, now, something that just came to my mind, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking to buy another house right now, and I want to install, inst- <laughs> it seems, seems off topic, but it kind of is because you brought up basement, right? And I'm not sure, well, we don't have basements really here in Texas, not too, it's not, not too common. Mm-hmm. And um, do, do those basements come with um, their own bathrooms? Yeah, no, I mean... That's what I like to try to find. I try to find these places that have like a full on basement apartment, like a separate entrance and everything. Like there's all these houses in Denver that uh, like are old, um, you know, from the built in the 20s, like some Victorian home or like a 1940s bungalow. And they've got these. I don't know why they did it, but they've got these separate entrances on the side. And then down below, they've already got a kitchen bathroom. Um, You know, it's all it's all kind of blocked off from the top portion. Um, so, you know, that, that's a perfect place. If you, you put a tenant down there and then rent out the top, it's, it's like, uh, it's like a duplex, but it's not, you know, it's still considered the primary residence for, at least for that tenant. I guess they used to just stick their mother-in-laws down there, right? Down in the hole. Yeah. 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 Moving along <laughs> over the, the nanny or something. <laughs> well, well, I was, I was asking cause like I saw something cool cause 
oh, well, we got this house with this add-on room, and, and, and my wife does, like, um, beauty, you know, um, esthetician, beauty stuff. And she wanted to do her, um, make, like, her own, like, a, a salon, you know, in the, in the back of the house that we're looking to buy. But she needs a restroom. And I, and I saw these, um, it's called <laughs> the Toilet Anywhere. And you could put this toilet, install it, any room in your house or any place that would make, like, a restroom. <laughs> and, and Micah's laughing, but this, this fascinates me. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and, and you just like, you could, you just stall it regular next to the wall and then behind the wall, it has this, um, it has this like box, you know, that when they use the bathroom, it goes into that box, it breaks everything up with this high power pressure thing and sends it all up through the tubes to out, out to your sewer system. And I was like, and I was wondering if, if, um, yeah, if they didn't come with bathrooms, that might be like a great idea for, um, for putting in a basement, you know? Sounds like Holy an album. Man, that's genius. It's it's genius. See, see, yes. this fascinates me and our guest and and Micah's laugh and he's, he's gonna have a yeah. You have an outhouse in house, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so wow, <laughs> I'd never heard of that. That's pretty yeah, cool though. Toilet anywhere, and I mean anywhere. I might start putting those in my private rooms. <laughs> Put it in your bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Oh yeah, James. One thing I wanted to ask you about, like Airbnb and stuff. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, BudandBreakfast dot com? Yeah. No. I mean, it, I don't know if you're talking about like the specific place. There's actually a Bud and Breakfast here in Denver, but then I know there's also like um, you know Air Bud or something like that. I know that there's a lot of places that are catering to the the you know the pot crowd is that what you're talking about are you talking about some place yeah this place is actually supposedly started in denver colorado like the the developers are from denver yeah no totally i mean i um i mean i don't know a lot about that place specifically but i do know that it is a huge draw here in denver um pot tourism is i mean as you might imagine it is, is a huge draw Wow. Okay. And uh, I was wondering if people were like, if that platform was starting to take off specifically in like your area, Washington, places like that. I mean, I don't know if people are really using that a ton. I, I only because I've never used it. Um, uh, and I know that a lot of Airbnb people will just post on there, you know, somewhere in the, the ad 420 friendly and that, that does it. Um, do you, do you, are you 420 know, friendly? Know. Yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth right now, my wife and I actually don't have any Airbnbs because we're owning in condos at the moment, and they don't, their HOA doesn't allow it. Oh, I see. Um, which sucks. Uh, we're, we're looking to change some of that. But, uh, um, yeah, when we were doing Airbnb full-time at, like, a number of different places, we, uh, we were definitely 420 friendly. And it was awesome because <laughs> you would come back, and they would, you know, they can't take this stuff on the flight. So you come back, and you've got a dispensary's worth of <laughs> pot and pot paraphernalia. Um, I mean, my wife and I haven't bought pot uh, from a shop in like years, uh, but we smoke. You know, we enjoy it. So uh, nice. anyway, we've had a lot of free pot. <laughs> wow, man. See, that's got to be good. One right now. Yeah, that's got to Denver. be good. I mean, he can just <laughs> openly say, "Yeah, I love pot, man." <laughs> man, great to live in Denver. It must be, man. And, that, and that's what I was, I was thinking about. Um, when my buddies, when the law first passed, and I had a lot of buddies. Oh, we're going to Denver, man! And they started looking on, you know, Priceline and all that, and they're like, "Oh man, all these places they don't, they're these hotels they don't let you smoke, man." And they're all they're bummed out, but. It, but Airbnbs, I like that was the perfect opportunity for Airbnbs to thrive because these owners are like, hell yeah, you don't have to stay at a hotel and not smoke. Come here and you can smoke all you want, you know. Yeah, totally. I, I actually got contacted by some investor in Florida who like two years ago came in and bought up a bunch of houses and then um, just started hacking them up into little apartments and was advertising as like the, the 420 420 house and i mean she was killing it oh, uh nice. everything in there was like 420 posters and like uh you know cheech and chong books and stuff like that <laughs> got the bob and, um, marley on in the background yeah yeah totally like a lot of yeah but i mean it it works you know it, it, and it's crazy too the type of people that come you think uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many of your listeners are 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 420 friendly in their own lives. Every single lives, one of them. 
Right. right, it makes you guys more interesting for sure. Yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah, we're different. Um, but like the people that come are not necessarily what you would expect. I mean, we had for sure we had like the typical stoners, but we also had these you know octogenarian grandparents who hadn't smoked pot in 30 years and were just like super excited to <laughs> to come to relive their youth. <laughs> It's a little stronger now, old grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't take the edibles, man. Mm-mm, so. mm-mm. Oh, yeah. man, those edibles, they man. Stay with you from yeah, what I hear, from yeah, what Mike, Mike has told me. Well, yeah. My, I mean, my, I'm originally from Washington State, so <laughs> Washington, Oregon, so, you know. <laughs> I was. Okay. Hey, about your condos. So you, you have condos, right? Correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Okay. Do you do you have you dabbled in the corporate rental market? Yeah. So um, you know we don't actually have it on corporate housing by owner like the big site for that. We we actually just use Craigslist. But we get, um, I think we get a, a pretty good mix between uh, corporate travelers and then traveling nurses. Um, it's it's pretty well split between those two groups. Um. And it does really well, you know. It's not uh, it's not Airbnb money, but you know we've got these tiny little spaces. We've got a studio and a tiny little one bedroom, and um, yeah, I mean we we furnished them up just like we did on Airbnb and rent them out, and um, we make probably fifty percent more than we would with like a traditional rental. So we're we're pretty happy about it. It's a good way to juice the rents around here with not that much work. So. Oh, okay, yeah, because. Have you have you tried probably listing it on corporate housing and then you could you might be able to start kind of making that Airbnb money? No, I haven't. You tell me about it right now, though. Oh well, I mean, because that's what happened with me <laughs> with my condo. I, I when I got shut down, I wanted to make the same amount of money, so I just posted it on corporate housing by owner, and they pretty much go find the tenants for you. People hit you up, say, "Hey, I want to book your place or whatever," um, and I was able to list it at the price that I made from my first month month of Airbnb and I have never any, had any problems getting any renters and I they charged me like I think a one time $400 fee for the whole year which you'll make back of course in probably a month dang yeah so yeah. you said go ahead no I just uh I'm I'm glad I came on your show so I could learn something <laughs> um oh yeah definitely man uh so with like I know the laws are strict in Denver, but like let's say they ease up, does Denver have like a down season? Seeing that they, you guys have kind of like a football team, basketball team, and I think you guys have a college there, right? Yeah, we've got a University of Denver, but it's not like a huge. It's big for hockey, actually, mm-hmm. uh, but but no other sports. Uh, lacrosse too, um, but you know, hockey and lacrosse are not huge draws. Not like the the Broncos or. Uh, or the Nuggets or the Rockies, you know, the major sports teams. Mm-hmm. Who are the Nuggets? Basketball. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, oh, yeah. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> like a D-League team, I guess. What do you guys have there? What are you, the, oh, the, we got a championship from the Dallas Mavericks, okay. So, yeah. You, you got one, right? Got one. I think <laughs> yeah, one. I'm a Laker fan, so I don't know what one championship <laughs> oh, <come> is. On. <laughs> Yeah. So, so okay, cuz you said that so would you got so you, okay, you said that you guys have all the major sports. So when when's your guys hot season for De- Airbnb? Yeah, I mean I, I I think it depends on what kind of property you've got. Um if you've got like the smaller spaces and you're getting like a, a couple or maybe two couples at a time, I think that um, you know, in our experience, it was spring until late fall. So like November, it starts to kind of drop off a little bit. Um, but I think that if you've got a big house, I think that that continues all the way through the holidays, truthfully, because, uh, people are coming, you know, families are coming to visit other family for the, the holidays. And, um, at least that's what I've heard from some of the, the clients that I consult with that if they've got a house, like it, it never really drops off too much. So. Um, but it, you know, if you're doing Airbnb, if you, if the rules let, let up a little bit and you were doing Airbnb in a small space, you'd do it from probably, uh, you know, March until November, and then you get a traveling nurse or a corporate rental of some kind, 
to carry you through that down season. So um, I, I believe it, you mentioned Colorado Springs, but do you, are you uh, familiar with this? This is like a Texas country fest over there in, in Colorado every year somewhere. He might no, I, I, I don't know about a Texas country fest. It, I have friends from here. I mean, like big crowds go to this thing every year. I think it's, but it's like it's in January or it's like in the coldest months. But they go and it's about, like, might be so, the Western Fox Show. No, it's a it's like country music, like Texas country music st- um, musicians, stars. I guess go down there and they have just big music fest over there in Colorado not, every year. You're talking to kind of a hipster, so country music is just, you know, it's off the <laughs> I, I go to Red Rocks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, do, I do want to go to Red Rocks. I've never been. Have you, uh, you, you've obviously been, right? Yeah, no, it's beautiful. It's awesome. Um, How far are you from there? Uh, I mean, Denver is maybe like a 15, 20-minute drive out to Red Rocks. Oh, It's nice. nothing. So you get like um, a lot of, oh. You you see you don't have any Airbnbs right now, but it's a big draw. I would I would assume when like a, a big star goes to Red Rocks and a lot of people want to come to town for it. Yeah, I mean I think uh, I think you definitely get that. Uh, D- Denver's so big that it's getting all sorts of people. That, I mean it's not just Red Rocks. But there's a couple towns right out out by Red Rocks, the Morrison and Golden. That they get a ton of that crowd for sure. Nice. So yeah. you're a um, we talked earlier. You're on the forums a lot. You're a forums junkie, right? Pretty much. Yeah. No. No. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, when when Micah said we're doing an interview with you, and I and I said, "Who the hell is that?" He he said, "Oh no, he's big on the Airbnb and the forums and stuff," you know. And so I saw that you have like um you have all these VP awards. You have uh, addict, genius, judge. So. What what is the stupidest thing you've ever seen on the forums? And after that, you can follow with maybe the smartest thing and the and the funniest or craziest thing that you've seen on there. Oh man, that's a. That's a uh, I don't know. I mean, I I think I don't know about the stupidest thing I've ever seen, but I I did just get served up this softball of a question uh, by somebody recently. They they said that uh, I think the. The headline was something like "The Coming Death of Airbnb." Oh my God! I wanted to ask you about that. I'm happy. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm happy you said that. <laughs> no, no, it was just some some guy. I mean, he was maybe a little older. Uh, I don't know, older than me at least. Um, uh, and he was talking about how Airbnb is going to go away and hotels are going to run it out. And it was just such a softball to take a swing at. And uh, I think my opening line was kind of a you know a dick move. It was something like I think. <laughs> typewriters and encyclopedias would have something to say about, you know, <laughs> <laughs> about um, anyway, uh, th- I mean, that was kind of dumb. I, I, I don't know where this guy's living. I mean, he, he seemed like a really nice guy and I think his points were really interesting, but, um, it, so that wasn't really the stupidest thing. I don't know about the funniest thing I've ever I seen. Think uh, put stuff like that just to get the, you know, get a whole bunch of hits, a whole bunch of uh, comments, get something going, right? Yeah, I mean, it riles people up like no other. I, I got more votes uh, for my comment than on that than I've ever gotten in my life. So. Yeah, because I definitely voted because that was the funniest thing I ever read when you said that. Because I, I read the title because he, he kind of like bolded the title. Hey, here's the coming death of Airbnb. Like he knew it was going to spark a reaction. And it was just, I was like, okay, whatever, man. And then when you know, I seen your response, I fell out laughing. <laughs> Yeah, it was total clickbait, you know. Like you gotta. <laughs> what happens next plan. will shock you. Yeah. Um, Micah told me about one the other day. It sounded pretty funny. He said, "Hi, I'm hi. I am a slam a slum lord or something oh, like that." <laughs> Hello, I am a slum lord. Yeah, that was pretty funny, man. I think <laughs> you gotta own it. You got to, man. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm happy you brought that up because that was actually one of my questions. Like, what do you think about that? So. Mine was like, I, I definitely think that's the older crowd thinking that Airbnb is going to go away. Um, definitely not on my end. So, yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> hey, you should do like we're, we're all about like share economy on here, right? And you said you got all this leftover um, bud, like every time that someone stays there, maybe people can like 
do a share economy on like let, call it splitabag.com and they all meet up in Denver and they can, you know, okay. share. I'm not advertising that over the <laughs> area. <laughs> but my email is, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another question. Yeah. Um, um, okay, let's say in Denver. What I want to do here at, at the house I'm trying to I'm trying to buy right now, and over here in Texas, in Arlington, Texas, is I'd love to put like a, an airstream in my backyard, you know, set it up nice and rent that out on Airbnb. Um, would that would that fly over there in Denver? You think that would be possible? Could people rent out like a, a trailer or airstream in the back of their house on Airbnb? No, totally. It's, and it, people are definitely doing it. Um, I don't know what it's like there in Texas, but I mean, Denver likes to think of itself as like a really cool city now. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's like Seattle or Portland of the mountains. And um, so, you know, it's filled with hipsters and uh, they love the Airstream. So, yeah, I mean, I see a, a number of people who've got that in their backyard and um, they're killing it. You know, they're, they're booked every night and they're getting crazy amounts of money for for such a small space. Um yeah, and it's actually, you know, it's one of those few ways, at least here in Denver, that you can actually do it legally because that's still considered your primary residence, you know, your backyard, so. Yeah, until the government takes that away from us too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with the whole marijuana thing, doesn't that kind of give you guys an advantage over the hotels? Like with the Airbnbs? Yeah, I mean, I, I would assume so. You know, most... Most hotels around here don't allow pot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think so. I, it's, but I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people don't don't want to allow it. I mean, if, you know, um, the people in my classes uh, who take like an Airbnb class of mine, they, I'd say still the majority of the people are not open to it. They, uh, maybe they're friendly to it in their personal lives, but they just think that it will smell up the place and, you know, uh, so it's it can still be kind of difficult to find a place, but um, if you allow it, it it you know you'll be booked. Basically, it's it'll make you stand out. What's what's like the the people that are saying no? Is it like a specific age group? Uh, I mean, I know where you're going with that. I mean, I think yes, it, it does tend to skew a little older, um, okay. but it's it's by no means like only older people that yeah. that don't want to allow it for sure. Um, yeah, I had some, I, we got into a fight in one of my, so I like, I teach a class about <laughs> uh, Airbnb hosting and there was this woman there. Um, I don't know. I mean, she, she had a bunch of opinions, um, about you know, politics that didn't really jive with mine anyway, but she was just, she said something to the effect of like, I hope Trump will take all these damn hippies and like, you know, arrest them or something. And, <laughs> Uh, she was talking. We were talking about pot and Airbnb, and she's like, "That's a gateway drug." And um, oh, God. <laughs> anyway, there are people out there like that, of course. Uh, but I, I, I don't know if there's any one, you know, particular crowd that's against it. That woman that I talked about came from Florida and was like buying up all these places to uh, to put on on Airbnb for as a, like a pot friendly place. Uh, she was she had to be 65 at least. So, you know. There's cool people and, and and not as cool people in every age group. We call those squares. Squares. <laughs> well, apparently I'm a square. I don't even know the term. <laughs> yeah, so, you're a square. No, James is cool. He, he's, he's cool, man. Are you cool, man? <laughs> so you teach classes and courses. That That's pretty cool, man. So how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've probably been teaching the hosting class for uh, – little over a year now um and then i i host uh, a couple different workshops each uh each month two different workshops uh, about uh, the laws here in denver and colorado springs and those are just at bars they're free people just come and like hang out and i give a little presentation about what you can and can't do because it's i don't know what it's like there in texas but here it's really difficult to find what the heck the laws are um you can't you know even if you know where to look um it's hard to read them you don't really know what's allowed and what's not so anyway i tried to uh kind of decode what you can do and you know a lot of people are interested for sure yeah definitely definitely yeah so it seems like the uh 
they kind of got stuff there to kind of hinder the share economy or well the share economy in general how's it doing in in denver because like i know you do are you guys banning uber or no no and yeah i mean it's weird the state of colorado actually passed a law uh maybe a year or two ago that formally allowed uber and lyft and um you know kind of made a statement saying like these are totally legit forms of the of the sharing economy uh so it's kind of weird when denver cracked down on it a little more but um you know it's colorado is a weird place because it's uh rapidly becoming a cooler more urban type state especially with denver um, but it's still got that Western mentality. So it kind of floats back and forth between these two worlds of like kind of libertarianism, get out of my business, government, stay away. And then quickly becoming a p- pretty liberal democratic city here, at least in Denver. And so I think those two forces are kind of always at, at odds a little bit. So you're like liberal libertarians. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Libertarians. There you go. So, well, one thing that was um, um, fascinating, like I read on your um, Bigger Pockets um, bio, was that you were an investigative journalist. Yep. Is that true? That's right. And, and, and so, how does, uh, I guess that, that how do you differ? Well, at first, I read it like you were like a, a private detective kind of thing, but it's more like, or did you like work for like news um, agencies and stuff like that? Or, and what did you do? Yeah, I mean, that's my background. I got my uh, degree in journalism, and um, I worked for kind of like an alternative paper in Orlando, Florida for a while, and then I covered uh, state politics in Kansas. Um, and Kansas is pretty interesting for their politics, so it was it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I worked in Kansas for like five years as a journalist at a newspaper there, and you know, wrote stories that got people fired, the whole journalism bit. Oh, wow. Um, you found the dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, I spoke the truth, okay? That's what I did. I just <laughs> I found the truth and I revealed it. And you didn't have to uh, um, move to Russia or anything like that? <laughs> no, not quite. Um, yeah. So well, then that's... I moved here and I... Oh, sorry. You moved that's to Denver thing. and, and, you... and uh, you... Realized you can't make any money in journalism with stuff. Um, so I think I was just kind of lost for a little bit. And then um, I st- my wife and I started doing TV and it just kind of like springboarded every uh, where I'm at right now. Oh, nice. So how is that? I mean, I guess you learned a lot of skills doing investigative journalism. How has that helped you in your, in your real estate ventures? Sure. Um, I think, I, I I still think that they're that different. You've got to, I don't know. I mean, you, it's kind of these bifurcated skill sets. Like you got to be pretty good at, at research. You've got to know the market. You got to know your area, uh, which is true in journalism and, and true in, in real estate. Um, so there's kind of like this analytical mind, but then you've also got to be really good with people and you got to make them feel comfortable and, and they got to trust you because you're handling this humongous uh, decision in their life. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it felt pretty natural, truthfully, to the transition. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I love it. it. It feels pretty much the same. I spend a lot of time doing research and then I go out and I deal with some people and I come back and do more research and give them the information. And so it's not that much different, except that I get paid really well doing this and I got paid crap being a journalist. So. <laughs> nice yeah man so uh one more question i think uh steve may have wrote this one down for you uh uh how does being married how how has being married affected your success has it hindered it uh hampered it what how's it how how has that affected you great question (laughs) that is a loaded question i mean (laughs) answer that honestly or what yes um is the wife around if she's not around (laughs) She's like probably 10 feet away behind the door listening right now. So, um, no, I mean, absolutely, it has helped me. Um, and, I mean, I could talk about all the ways that being married helps you anyway, which is, you know, 
I'm kind of a slob, so it helps me not be a slob, all that crap. But I mean, she, um, my wife, Erin is actually in the business with me and she's much more of a systems person and uh, she's organized. She loves spreadsheets. If she could spend all day looking at spreadsheets, that's what she'd do. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm the guy that leaves the cabinet doors open in the kitchen. So, um, I think we're, we've got some complementary skills that, that make for good business partners as well as uh, good life partners. So that's my shout out to my wife, Aaron. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so and, wait, let me ask you what, uh, what kind of response did you expect to get? Did, did you expect me to be honest about it? Hindering, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it was really to question your intelligence, man. If your wife was behind you, you, <laughs> you gave the wrong answer. <laughs> She's a breaking I'm slow. Um, <laughs> no, well, I thought about this question. That's what I mean. Uh, that's why I wrote it because I thought about it first. But I, I was like, you know, I, I guess I guess I often think I was like, man, I'd be way further along in my real estate ventures if I wasn't married. If I was single, I could do all this house hacking, this and that. And I was like, man, no, when I was single, all I wanted to do was get drunk and party and me and, you know, (laughs) that's all I wanted to do. And now I'm married and I can't do that no more. So I might as well do real estate. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, actually, that's a good point. I I will say this, you know, I get a lot of I get a lot of guys who come to me and they say, hey, I want to do this house hacking thing with Airbnb. So I want to buy a property uh, with a basement apartment and then I'll live in the basement and I'll, I'll rent out the top. And I've gotten so that I'm smart now. I, the first question I ask is, have you talked to your girlfriend about this? Because <laughs> uh, most often the ladies do not like this idea of being so close, of having like some stranger in their house. So I guess in that way, I mean, to completely stereotype, I think, um, you know, there, there are some there are some differences, it seems to me, between the sexes and, and how open they are to house hacking. Um yeah, we'll say that, that. that. That's a really good point because it took me not a while to get my wife on board because we do three private rooms in our house, and now we just finally we're converting them into one for the football season just to see how it goes. And, yeah, it, it, women, that it's not they're against it. They're going to give you the other side of it, you know, and it kind of – the question is like she says, well, what are they going to do if I'm, you're not here, things like that. They're really good questions and things sometimes we just don't think about, like – one episode we have my wife here and like Steve's like, Oh, it's good. You're here. So we can get the other side of it. Cause me and Steve, we'll just jump into something. Hey, we're going to do this. And then, you know, your wife kind of like, Oh, pump the brakes, pump the brakes, you know, <laughs> let's, let's think about this, you know? And, um, yeah. my wife's on board with it now, but yeah, that, that's definitely a good question to ask them. Sometimes yeah. you got to put your foot down, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> I get her to come along. <laughs> Yeah, his wife was on the show. She's great. She does our intro and outro. She's an amazing lady. She's very entrepreneurial. Like yes, yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> yeah. So are you a Denver, uh, Denver Broncos fan, James? Yeah, I mean, I guess I've become one. I'm from Missouri, so I'm supposed to be a Chiefs fan. But Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's not much of a... I don't think that it's a really good time to be a Broncos fan right now. <laughs> hey, Brock yeah. Osweiler is available, right? You what? <laughs> Get Brock Osweiler back. That's right. Yeah, I forgot you guys had him. Uh, no, no. Uh, who had him? Uh, we're going off Browns, topic right? Here. The Browns. The, yeah, I think. That's, that's sad when the Browns cut you, bro. That's not good. I don't think they cut him, though. Well, they, they put him on the block. Oh, man. A rookie's going to be starting. We're getting way off base. Let's go back to your um, James's headshot. Why did you do a black and white headshot, James? Trying to uh, uh, James that's... Dean like a hero of yours? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I fancy myself pretty pretty suave looking, I guess. Um, uh, okay. I don't know. It's from my wedding, and it was the best photo I had at the time. So, why'd you choose color? Why did I choose color? Chose me, James. All right. <laughs> 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 no, it's just messing with you. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, man. Pretty, pretty suave. Trying, you taking off the topics here? Yeah, oh, okay. I was I was <laughs> yeah, oh, and there. a very important question. You love a very uh, hoppy beer, like an IPA, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. So, um, don't they jam so many hops in all these beers? They all taste the same after a while. 
No, that's not true. I mean, I guess if you're an amateur, they probably. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You like, like do you like IPAs? I like Bud Light, sir. Okay. <laughs> no, um, I love IPAs. I love I love the hoppiness. I got ah, uh, I, lo- I love that. It's delicious. I do think there's a a bit of an over reliance on the hop. The I gotta say nowadays everyone loves the hop, but uh, I yeah. I it's, like it. It's the go-to. I mean, but, you know, the funny thing is I love the, the hoppy beer. I, sometimes I want to just chill and, and, you know, enjoy you know, some Mexican beers, something smoother, you know. But every now, like, uh, every now and then I like to have some, some good hoppy beers. And, um, like, and, and it's funny because the best beer still that I've ever tasted that stuck with me in my life was when I was in Amsterdam. And I, had, and I went to the, the Heineken Brewery. And had a fresh from the tap, fresh from the freaking ha- brew, uh, brewery, the uh, ice cold Heineken, just, oh, it was like liquid gold. And, it, and it's not a very, it's, it's a light beer. It's like a lighter beer, but it's like, it was just so good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> was, there was no skunkiness. Like over here, you know, the, when the Heinekens get here, they're skunky, whatever. They're still good, but they're yeah. skunky. But over there, it's just this whole... I mean, they've been brewing beers before our country was a country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Now, yeah. I, I interviewed this guy from uh, when I was a journalist. I interviewed this guy from the Brooklyn Brewery. Um, he's the, their master brewer. He was he changed my outlook on beer forever. He was talking about like bubble gum and clove and in and, and PBR. Um, and uh, so now, even whenever I have a PBR, I'm, I'm trying to dissect the, the flavors, uh, which. Is a really annoying quality. But. A PBR, like a Paps Blue Ribbon. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We get those. Uh, they they give you those free at the bars here. Those Paps Blue Ribbons, pretty good. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> All right, I'm coming to Texas. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> you actually like PBR? Yeah. Well, you like Bud Light? You think Bud Light's like a step up from PBR or what? If I want to do a keg stand, it's Bud Light, James. Okay. <laughs> I can see our regional differences. <laughs> Maybe Miller Lite. You know, sometimes I feel fancy. Yeah. But Coors yeah, Light, okay. now Coors Light, they do give that stuff away at all the bars here pretty much. I'm not giving it away, but, you know, like a dollar a beer. It's pretty cheap over here. Uh, and that comes from no, Denver, right? Golden, Colorado? Golden, Colorado, yeah. <laughs> uh, just side. Yep. Okay, okay. A serious question. Sorry, we got off topic. Micah, Micah's over here. Um, yeah, my bad. My uh, wife's sitting here texting me saying that we're completely out of gas in Arlington. So, oh my yeah, gosh. Uh, it's getting bad down here in Texas. It's getting bad. We have to start fighting people in the streets. Yeah, like the the, so, the purge. Okay, so you said you were renting to traveling nurses, right? That's right. Yep. So, like, how do you market that without going to corporate housing by owner? Yeah, I just use Craigslist to tell you the truth. Um, I think that there's so much demand in Denver right now, and there's such little inventory that you can be a pretty lazy landlord and, and get renters in, at least in my experience. Um, now, I mean, it doesn't hurt that my places are in uh, Capitol Hill, which is a, just a pretty cool little area. Um, so they kind of sell themselves in a way. But I just use Craigslist, and then I just say it's a furnished, you know, short-term rental or, or medium-term rental. And um, I stay in there in the description somewhere that, it, you know, it'd be good for traveling nurses or traveling business people. But um, I'm not targeting them specifically. I just kind of rely on the, uh, the location and uh, good staging, good photos to kind of draw the people that I want. Okay. I have a question for James. Um, okay, here he goes. This sounds like a, like a pithy kind of question. What does what does passive income mean to you? Oh gosh, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, I mean, it means not working for the money. The money comes in, but you're not doing much work. That's kind of what it means to me. Once you get something set up, it just flows in. Because because people, I guess. Um, when you hear passive income, people think like, yeah, you just put your money somewhere and it does, it works for you, right? And But cool. real estate, I mean, they say, yeah, real estate, passive income. But to me, it's been, man, it, I mean, I love it. I, I love doing it, uh, but it's been a lot of work. It's anything yeah. but passive in a way. 
Yeah, my wife and I always talk about Airbnb, like being, in a way, it's easy money because um, it's not rocket science to get a, a you know a good Airbnb up and running, um, but it's it's by no means um, lacking in work. I mean, you're gonna be, you're gonna work your ass off to make that money, but um, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's I don't know if there's such a thing as passive income in real estate anymore, unless you're you've got that property manager up and running too. So. I think I think you can if you. I think we should you should we should focus on. Uh, we talked to a guy named Al. I think we should focus on maximizing one piece of property because I think in real estate we go for more properties. Just we go for quantity over quality. Um, I think if we go like the corporate rental route, let's just look at that for example. If you can maximize, if you can cash flow two grand off one corporate rental, and you're in there what every three months instead of Airbnb, you're in it what every few days, every week. You can kind of kind of relax and make passive income. You know what I mean? Because with my corporate rental, I'm really laid back. I don't have anything to worry about because I get a pretty good tenant. I can just sit back and chill. They're in there for three to eight months however long they're in there and it's not really much to worry about only because it's with condos that's what i was saying with your condos you should you should you should make a killing with those because i'm actually considering getting more just for the corporate rental purpose hmm. yeah yeah i don't know i mean i think um I, this isn't exactly what you're talking about but i i do think that people think um well the people that come from like the long-term rental side mm-hmm. they think that what what I'm doing and what you're talking about doing is uh, is a little crazy. They think that's so much work. You know, you got to turn a place over every three months. But uh, I'm coming from the Airbnb side where I was scrubbing toilets every two days and, you know, uh, t- picking up hairs off the bathroom floor, you know, pretty gross stuff every couple of days. So um, for me, uh, corporate rental or a traveling nurse, uh, like three months stay is totally hands off. I'll, I'll take that every day. Exactly. Yeah. And I was wondering, like in your listing, because you said you list on Craigslist, uh, do you overcharge? Like, do you kind of put a corporate pricing on your listing? I mean, what do you mean by uh, corporate pricing as opposed to as opposed to what? Uh, as opposed to like a traditional rent. Like, let's say a one bed, one bath goes for eight hundred a month, right? Would you charge like, would, since you're fully furnished corporate? Would you charge like sixteen hundred? Would you post it as like sixteen hundred a month on Craigslist? Oh, oh yeah, heck yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, um, like we've got this three hundred fifty square foot studio. Um, it's on the penthouse of this building, so it's got really nice views, but it is small. Um, we, I'm pretty sure we could get about a thousand for it on the market, maybe nine hundred uh, if it was just unfurnished for a year, and we get about. 1650 to 1700 for it furnished. So that's what um, I'm talking about. See, and that's why I don't have a problem with corporate rentals. I'm like, I'll do a three month turnover because if I'm just doing long term, those three months uh, from a long term tenant, I'm not going to get nearly as much. You know what I mean? So you're pretty much, you're already doing corporate. You know what I mean? You already went that route because you've got it furnished. You're charging that corporate price. So definitely, man, keep doing what you're doing. Where do you get your furniture from? Uh, Craigslist and IKEA. Truthfully, I mean that's. Um, I've gone. I've I've got some nicer pieces. I try to get like I try to build around some nice pieces, but then like all the smaller stuff I get from Craigslist or IKEA. Um, I I don't know how I feel about IKEA yet. You know my rentals are still pretty young. Uh, you know a couple of years old. So uh, we'll see how I feel about that in a few years. Like maybe. You know, Aaron and I are going to want to switch to something a little more durable. Um, I feel like I read a post of yours, Micah, where you were talking about, like, you got to get nice stuff. Um, that, am I remembering that right? Um, probably. I, I was probably – well, I get nice stuff, but I get it for super cheap. Have you ever tried OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace? Yeah. No, no, man. I love uh, – I don't use OfferUp that much, but I've used the Marketplace on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, so like for example, we just furnished our room M. Um, we got a brand new fifty five inch four K H D T V. We spent two hundred and eighty bucks. Uh what we did was uh while I'm at work, I I work like an hour away from my house, but the area that I work in it's like this kind of nicer area. A lot of football players live there. 
So I kind of just scroll Facebook Marketplace in that area, and people sell all types of stuff, man. Brand new TVs, brand new refrigerators, and I just go pick it up. So that that's how I kind of keep things cheap and furnish it, like, really nice for cheap. Like, people think, oh, you spent this much money. I'm like, nah, I probably spent three quarters of what you think. Hmm. Do you mind me asking about how much it took to, you said you've got some condos. Are they, what, are they one bedroom, two bedroom? No, my condo is one bed, one bath. And then I just, I just furnished my entire upstairs for, that's a living room, three bedrooms, under a thousand dollars. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. right, You got it going on. That's all right, man. (laughs) Jeez. That's good. Yeah, because we just brought a brand new refrigerator as well, and the guy gave it to us for 150 bucks. It was on Facebook Marketplace. So, yeah, I tell people, man, take advantage of, like, like okay, here's another thing. Like, Labor Day is coming up, right? Yep. All these furniture places are going to have these sales. People think, run to the furniture place. I'm like, no, run to offer up, run to Facebook Marketplace, because those people mm-hmm. running to those furniture places are going to replace the stuff that's in their house. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's just got to kind of change your niche on it. But, yeah, man, I, was, I tell people get nice but get cheap, cheap and nice. Yeah, I like to visit the uh, the Goodwill store that's uh, down near go. Cherry Creek here that's, uh, you know, really nice neighborhood, but they're dropping off $5,000, $10,000 couches, you know, for nothing. Exactly. Today. And I didn't yeah. think about Goodwill, writing that to my list. No, no, James. Every time, uh, well, like I, I've never been to Denver myself. You been, Micah? No. Okay. Well, every time I, I I talk to friends that go and they, you know, they they love to go skiing and all that stuff. They always talk about the best experience, the their most memorable memorable thing over there is 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 being in a hot tub outside in the middle of winter when it's snowing. And do you do you um, know of people like or people you've helped get plate get um, spots to to Airbnb that have outdoor hot tubs or and is there like a huge difference do they make like a whole bunch more money <laughs> i no i mean i don't know anybody who's got a hot tub but that's uh that's kind of a mountain thing more than a denver thing oh okay okay and i'm sure if you're from texas you think denver and the mountains are all the same but we're <laughs> a real city now. so uh um no i mean i i don't know many people that have hot tubs around here and um, but definitely, like if you're up in Breckenridge or Vale or Aspen, you know that that's the thing to do for sure. You know, strip down and get in the hot tub while it's snowing. Look at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you know your hot tubs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This is going in a weird direction. <laughs> See, that, that, that's my contribution to the show. Mike is all about you know <laughs> Airbnb this, Airbnb that, and I'm like, I want to get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Uh, uh, real quick, um, you had mentioned this about Airbnb fees going up. What do you What do you think about the? Is there new fees or what's going on with it, James? Yeah, no, you are asking me? Yeah, I was looking at Micah, but I asked. I was asking you because I think Micah wanted to chime. You for oh. Micah, you first chime in real quick. Oh, like okay, so I posted one of my timeshare rooms, and like when I when I, uh, the person requested to book it. I noticed the service fee went up to like, it was like they were taking like $15 out of my pay to a point where I wasn't making a profit. And I'm like, Jeez. whoa, what, what's going on? Yeah, because I'm like, what's going on? Why is the service fee so high? So I don't know what they're doing right now. I haven't had the problem ever since. But, yeah, I guess their service fees may be going up. I don't know if they're, it's because they're getting big and growing or, you know, because they got all the experience stuff going on. But, yeah, it seems like their service fees may be on the rise. So, Wait, so you're talking about the uh, percentage that they take from the host. That I mean, it used to be three percent. Um, you're talking about that service fee going on, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if I don't know if it's still three percent. That's something I need to look up because it had me concerned when it went up that high. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, this is not exactly what you're saying, but I, I, it's interesting you mentioned the experiences. Uh, you know, I I don't know if you're if your listeners know about the Airbnb experiences where you get to go to like LA and uh, you know, have a beach tour with some local guest or something, but that, I get the sense that they kind of rolled that out a little too quickly and it's not doing as well as they thought. And so maybe they are trying to, you know, to uh, make up some money for that. But I, I, think, 
I think their experience is maybe killing it because I see experiences like 163 five star reviews. But of course, these are the ones that they put up. You know what I'm saying? Right in your face. So I, I wonder. That's a good. That's a good point. I wonder how how that market is doing for them. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, Hey, uh, still there, James? No, I'm here yet. Oh, okay. Were you going to say something? No. <laughs> this, <laughs> like, no. This is the time in the conversation when it gets awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, Space Cake is kind of catching up to, to James. A space Cake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, are you aware, James, are you aware of Turo? And have you ever used it or consider using it? Yeah, no, I actually used Turo for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I think I'm actually going to use it again. My um, my buddies and I used to take a motorcycle trip, but I have actually just agreed to get rid of my motorcycle. Um, oh. My wife won a big battle there. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, I get to rent whatever the heck car I want. So, I, you know, I want something with a stick, manual and um, fast. So anyway, uh, yeah, no, I've used it. I liked it. How about you? Yeah, I used it recently in South Padre Island, and um, I had a rough experience, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it again. You know, I gotta get a bigger sample size. I was ready to just like f you Turo and this BS whatever. And um, yeah, the dude was like half an hour late after we landed. We're sitting out there in the heat waiting for a dang dang Turo car to show up. And he leaves us with like a third tank of gas. It's dirty. It's inside and out. Man, it was like we were. I was pissed. Of course, it was the it was a Nissan Versa, the most basic. I'm surprised it had wheels on it, you know. And um, it just and I, it it just had a bad taste in my mouth from the very beginning because just I mean that half hour late thing, you know, that's what really yeah. irked me. But then all these other things I might have overlooked, but. Yeah, I took a ton of pictures of that car, too, before I took off. Because you're supposed to, it, it, Turo tells you, you know, it says, please take pictures of the car and take pictures of the gas and mileage so they won't try to come after you later. So, yeah, it was it was a rough experience. But after that initial day, the rest of the week was pretty smooth. It was an all right car. It drove. And um, and I guess maybe we didn't get pulled over because we didn't look like tourists because it looked so <laughs> ugly and <laughs> dirty and had, like, bumper stickers all over it. It was just... <laughs> Who puts bumper stickers on the ride that you're gonna make money on, man? It's just it's tasty. It said tasty or something. I don't know it's, what it's kind of symbolism was going on on there, but it was it was a rough it was a rough ride, bro. I was, <laughs> I'd at least wash my car if I'm gonna let my friend borrow my car. Let alone I'm gonna make it in my business, you know. It was rough. It was His rough. Turo driver hopped up, <laughs> dropped off a hoopty, and hopped in an Uber and rolled out, man. <laughs> uh, so that was my experience man but yeah yeah i think they're uh they're still new to the game you know they don't know what they're doing maybe yet who knows or maybe they, they price it so low they don't give a darn you know <laughs> well there's 10 other guys are gonna rent it if you don't rent it we don't care kind of like some people do airbnbs like that right if you're in a prime spot people are gonna rent it no matter what why make it nice yeah, so I'm not sure a Nissan Versa is going to get rented no matter what, but yeah. Yeah, what? What was that? I'm I'm not sure a Nissan Versa is exactly the same <laughs> as a, a place in the heart of anything. It's, I don't know. But, yeah. That's yeah. That's um. It's not the highest end car. Let me see. <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? Oh, the, uh, I had, so besides Toro and Airbnb, what else in the share economy have you lo- used? Uh, I mean, that's it. I, I use uh, – that's, that's probably it. I don't know. What are you guys using? Uh, I'm about to start using Spinlister. That's on my list. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like – because, okay, I, I bought two bikes for Airbnb, and then I'm like – Wow, if they get hurt on these bikes, I'm, it's going to be on me. You know what I mean? So then I found this place called Spin Lister, where you can list your, you can pretty much rent out your bike for a day, week, month, and you just change the price. So if people at my Airbnb want to use the bikes, they have to go on Spin Lister to use them. So yeah, Mark. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to list your bikes on there? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a place you post like your bike, and people yep. rent it rent it out from you. Well, that's smart. I mean, I know a lot of people include, especially here in Denver, it's kind of a biking culture. They they just leave the bikes there in the Airbnb. Man, if you could use it, um, kind of have an add on there. Uh, any any way you could get a little extra money, I think that's smart. So. Yeah, and I'm thinking about getting a Toro car eventually. Uh, we found a hookup on those, so we may do that as well. You should have washed it, man. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do you do your own pricing, James, or do you use like an app for that? I mean, when we did it, we were I was managing it actively. I I, I never liked the apps. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I should give them another try, but um, I just didn't think that they they really nailed the price that I could get. I, I always found that they were under. Um, so, but you know, if it, the thing is, if you're going to scale, there's no way you could actively manage your pricing all the time. I was always looking at it. So at, at my max, I had three places. No, I had four at one point. Um, but um, if I, you know, if you went any higher than that, there's no way that I'd, I'd have the time to be actively looking around and, and making sure the prices were appropriate. So, Did you list them on other sites besides Airbnb? Yeah, I listed it on uh, VRBO, but... I just, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a business guy. I, I did not come from like an entrepreneurial background by any means. So uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Um, but I, I just listed it on VRBO for like a, a ton more than I had it on Airbnb because I knew on Airbnb I could get, I could get rented at my sweet spot price. I knew what that price was. Um, I knew I could get booked. Um, full time if I wanted to. So I just threw it up on VRBO for a lot more money. And if somebody happened to book there, then heck, I'll take it. I'll take an extra, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks a night um, if I can get it. That's a damn good idea. You know what? I was actually thinking about it because the the forum guy we referred to earlier, that's actually one of his points. He said he can list his property for almost $100 more a night and people book it on VRBO. Now I'm going to, for my upstairs, I'm going to do that just to see if that's really true. Because I've heard people say that. I, don't, I've, I guess I just haven't really taken it serious. But if, if that's true, I'm going to do it. You know, that guy that we're talking about, um, and now I feel like we're, we've got a beef with this guy. We don't even know. <laughs> Let's bring him on. Uh, yeah. Um, he, I think he's, you know, he's in a not as big a town. Uh, I think it's somewhere in South Carolina. And. Um, something tells me that that's just kind of the VRBO crowd there. Um, I know that's, that's always like one of the big discussion points, VRBO versus Airbnb. What kind of crowd do you get? What kind of spaces do you rent out on there? Um, and I, th- I think there's probably a lot of crossover nowadays, but I still think that that somewhat holds true that if you're in a little more rural area, bigger houses, I think you kind of, that tends to go to VRBO. So if I'm that's not, what I think. I, I, I 100% agree with you there because I think it's like – I think VRBO, people go for like a vacation destination. And if he's in South Carolina, the only place I could think his place is at is probably Myrtle Beach because like, cause he, he always talks about his down season. So he goes, yeah, my down season, I just post him everywhere and just try to get a booking. You know what I mean? So definitely if he's kind of like in a vacation or rural area, yeah, he, he's – yeah, I could see that. But I, I, I'm gonna try my upstairs just on VRBO and price it like really crazy, and if I get some hits, cool, I'm down with that. But yep. what's the what's the craziest guest experience you've ever had? Oh gosh, you know I I, I think we uh, we had a woman just flat out tell us that she was using this. Airbnb as a place to spark a little love interest in her husband. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that they enjoyed kind of role playing and like they're so excited to stay in our place because he's going to come and like she's going to answer the door like the full thing. And they, um, uh, so I don't know that you know that's I don't know why you need to tell me that. Don't tell me that. Um, Did she tell you the uh, safe word, James? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, I, I hired out the cleaning for that one. Um, 
That's awesome. Wow, man. This is kind of an open couple, it looks like. Wow, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Trying to spice it up, man. You got to, you know, married that long. You got to do different things, right, Micah? Role playing the Airbnb, yeah. yeah. Micah, Micah puts wigs on and stuff. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess that kind of ties into, like, what's the craziest uh, or coolest or whatever, weirdest stuff people have left behind besides weed and weed paraphernalia? I don't know. I mean, I, I've gotten a lot of clothes, um, but clothes? I, I haven't had anything super weird um, show up. No one's left, like, a dog or, a, you know, a small child. <laughs> you know what? You? In my house, the only thing I got left behind was Coca-Cola, some cheese, and uh, Arizona iced tea, and prescription pills. <laughs> yeah, and the pair of draws. That was it. So, <laughs> that's it? Yeah, that's Nothing it so cool. far, man. Yeah. And now, my draws. condo, I was making a killing, man. Whole pizzas, everything else. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> Would you, you play poker, James? No. no. You? I, I, a little bit. Little little Texas Hold'em every now and then. I thought I thought it was a cool idea. You know, you, you have guests and and hey, y'all want to play some poker, and then you know, and oh. hey, yeah, let's play poker. You know, it'd be cool to have a, like a poker night and then take all their money. Like you like double your profits, right? <laughs> it'd be your cards. I mean, you could cheat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm either going poker. Yeah, I need to go to poker or pool table. I'm going the pool table route. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I'd go ping pong. Truthfully, that's uh, that's where I'd take my money. So. Oh, nice! You good at ping pong, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad at racket sports, but I don't think I like people enough actually to to want to play poker with them. So, uh, I tend to be a little more antisocial. So. Yeah, it happens. But, yeah. yeah. But. Well, this is a pretty pretty fun interview. You think? Yeah, pretty good, man. We got some good information out of you. <laughs> um, when this goes up live, we will definitely send people to, do you have a website for your courses or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got, uh, it's just my, my name of, uh, of our business, James Carlson, real Uh, and we've got a calendar, like a class calendar right there on the front page that you can click on. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. We're definitely gonna, uh, we're going to promote you, James. Yeah. Promote you and you send famous. people your way. You know, <laughs> I'm counting on you, man. I need you. <laughs> we'll get you like one, maybe two clicks. You know what I'm saying? That'll be from <laughs> us. Those two clicks, by the way. Well, thanks for being on our show, dude. You're great. We had a great time. Give it up for James. Yeah, give it up yeah. for James. And um, James um, Carlson, Car- Carlson, right? Carlson. That's it. Yeah, like James a, Carlson. Like a Viking name. Good, strong Viking name. But yeah, we'll uh, definitely about. be in touch with James, man, <laughs> especially with the whole Denver Airbnb market. Oh yeah, we got to go explore Denver and do some research over there. Some definitely. really important research. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> 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 Apparently, we won't even, have to, won't even have to buy any if we know uh, James. I'm just kidding. This is all this is all you know funny stuff. We're having fun here, no? <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on our show, man. We really, really appreciate it. We had a great time, and yeah, we'll we'll let you know when it airs. And there you go. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, it smells good. Man. Had a good time, guys. Thank you. Oh yeah, no problem, man. This is Micah and Steve at Live Let Thrive. You can check us out on our website, LiveLetThrive.com. Call us at four six nine three hundred ninety one hundred. We are out. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live Let Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.